Welcome to Spread, Spread the, the word. word. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cheers, guys. I just heard you cheers in her face. <clears throat> Cheers. 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 Happy spread the word, y'all. Happy spread the word. Okay. So I'm starting. I read Revival Season by Monica West. So I picked this up on a whim one day, and I was like, this is not something that I would usually read, so I'm going to try it. So it is about a family, um, and the patriarch of this family is a traveling preacher, and he goes from um, tent to tent across the south, and um, preaches to very large groups of people, but also heals them. Wait, is this in present day also? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, in present day. Mm -hmm. So he travels with his family, his daughter Miriam, Caleb is his son, and then um, their other sister, I can't remember her name, but she has cerebral palsy. They have a lot of faith in him. They uh, definitely idolize him and you, at the beginning of the book, you're a little bit like, is he actually healing people? But it seems like at some point he actually was. Mm, like um, real. Like, like real. real. He is going on one of his tours for the summer, and they really look forward to it. They love doing it. And he goes to a church, and there's a blind man that comes up, and he can't heal him. He calls him a fraud when it doesn't work. And he just, like, loses his mind and mm. takes him out back. So Miriam's family is still in the crowd. Miriam follows to see what's going on and watches him beat this man and he sees Miriam and he's like you can't tell anybody about this they like have to leave obviously because he just beat this man up they get back in the car they go through the rest of the circuit and they don't have as many people attending so the word has spread but luckily for them word has not spread back to their hometown and so their hometown apparently every time they return from these summer tours like welcome them with all this fanfare and they're excited mm. to have him back and meanwhile Miriam is just like knows that this thing happened and it's just like hovering over her yeah and something happens where he like at their home church and then Miriam she figures out that she can heal a big issue with that is obviously he's going through this thing where he is losing his ability to heal he is violent and um egotistical is he like it. derailing like i don't understand how he's he's, he's kind of a preacher in the first place if he's like mm -hmm. so violent and mm -hmm. he's just unhinging yeah yes all. yeah he's just like going off the rails for okay. sure yeah sounds like he's a narcissist she's gotcha. a child of a narcissist he's just got them all so brainwashed mm -hmm. yeah yeah and miriam's coming out of that and she's the only one coming out of that so mm -hmm. You know, there's that isolation too. Very alone place to be in. Mm -hmm. Part of the issue too is that even though women can have these abilities, they're not supposed to use them. Of course, because the Bible says that Naturally. they're not supposed to use them. <clears throat> so there's that also. So as he's losing his abilities, he's becoming more and more violent. He starts to beat her mother at home very intensely, and uh, mm -hmm. he also starts to beat Miriam. And her, like her mom's not really doing anything about it. And what I, I this is gonna sound effed up, but one of the things that I liked about the book, but also hated, was like the you in these like abusive relationships, the mother is often painted as like the foil to the father, mm -hmm. and um, she was just as flawed, I would say. Like mm -hmm. she wasn't beating them, but she wasn't protecting her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it sounds bad that I liked that about this, yeah. but it's just That's kind realistic. of like, realistic, yeah. Realistic. yeah. If yeah. you're a woman in that situation, you're not going to be the person who can rise to every occasion yeah, mm -hmm. and, and protect your children or yourself at every single turn. And I just loved Miriam. She is naive, but... How old is she? She is 16, I want to say. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, maybe 15 or 16. So like, understandably a little <clears throat> the naiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she doesn't, but once she sees him do that, her, I mean, it's just like a steady yeah. decline. Yeah, yeah. Like, she does. Yeah, it doesn't, at that, at that age, something that happens in your life kind of forces that, like, those rose-colored glasses off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like it does, it does not take a lot, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, my entire reality has shifted. Yeah. yeah. It just took one thing. You can read it through whatever lens you want, and I read it as a world where God exists, 
and he bestows supernatural powers on people. And if you um, get too arrogant, you will have those powers taken away. Oh, so you think the powers are real? Yes. In, this, in the book? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. I kind of liked that about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little bit of a mm-hmm. shifter with that. So, in conclusion, I really enjoyed it. It was a really fast read. I probably read it in a couple days, um, if that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I highly recommend it. Excellent. I read uh, The Nature of Witches. Look, can you quickly show the Yeah, yeah, everyone should jacket. see it. The inside jacket is oh, also beautifully decorated. It's so pretty. I was, shelving, I was shelving them, it's and gorgeous. one slipped out of the, the dust jacket. I was like, oh, no! And I was like, oh, yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. It is young adult, and uh, it takes place at a school for witchcraft in, the, in this world version of the United States. Uh, if you were born on an equinox or a solstice you are have which have magical abilities Mm -hmm. yes so that and then that's what um your season is so every all the witches have like a season that they're strongest in and then in the like when it's not your season you still have the ability to like use power but it's just sort of like you're like weak Uh, but our main character Clara she is an ever witch and it's like the first one in like a hundred years they're not very common so Mm -hmm. she is um changes her power changes each season to be the of course that season's power always the main character is like the like hulked out <laughs> yeah, <I've heard. laughs> she's having she has cut trouble controlling her power she accidentally killed her parents and oh the stakes are raised <laughs> and she accidentally killed her best friend oh my god and, oh! Yeah. and then she also this wasn't really her fault her a teacher who was trying to help her get control of her powers he ended up dying in a tornado that she was trying to contain but wasn't able to so she's i think like understandably shaken yeah about and sh- yeah. using her magic and but she's sort of like both her schools and the world's only hope because um it's still like the world is still like ours and that there's global climate change happening and apparently like in this world witches sort of help control the weather but um they're not able to control it because it's becoming so chaotic and so they're trying to get what they call like human shaders i think in the in the book and so they're trying to get them to like curb their behavior mm. <laughs> as are all the scientists yeah, right <laughs> but in the meantime they're like she's sort of the only hope to be able because she's the only one who can use all the seasons and is powerful enough to like help with the problem is that the witches are being drained from having to use their powers so like that is like kind of the story arc with her she's got to try to figure that out and then there is a um, love interest who comes in saying he's a spring witch and he's like so and you're just like, I love your masculinity. Please come to me. <laughs> Be real. Be real. Be real. He has like all his flowers. Oh, he's doing God. like garden research. I don't know. And he's, oh, Spring and he witch. has a ton of teas that he has in his little oh hut. Oh my God. His little hut. It's like a little cabin. He has his own cabin. <laughs> she does too, but it's because she's isolated from everyone because they don't want her to kill anyone else. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh, and. The, along with the authors like writing about the change of the seasons um so the, the author ended up becoming like a weather spotter um as part of the research for this book and it shows because like her writing about the weather is so good yeah it's like sort of like if rob fowler was a bit of a poet oh, rob fowler, oh that's a great, great job but that's great <laughs> a little dry i gotta sometimes. make sure to tag <laughs> there but there. he does slide in the jokes uh, yeah, yeah, yeah the dry humor. <laughs> the dry yeah. humor. Yeah. So the shaders are the humans, not yeah. the witches, right? Right. Are they aware of the witches? Did you say that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Are they aware that they are trying to harness the elements for them? They know that they control the weather, mm-hmm. and it's sort of like the reason mm-hmm. they've been able to... Um, the witches, they, they're sort of like... Well, they've always been able to fix it before, so what is different oh. now? And the and witches so, like, are trying to be like, so it's way like, worse now. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, do the do the shaders think that like the witches are withholding now? Yeah, I guess they just have a lack of understanding of like what really goes into changing the weather. Why Magic it's, and why weather. It's so much, yeah. yeah. Why it's so much harder now? Similar so, to right. reality. Yeah. <laughs> also, yes. Yes. Sort of like the shaders are politicians mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> and climate, climate change deniers. deniers. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's funny. There's some not so mm-hmm. subtle, you know, uh, commentary going on yeah. in this book. But also cloaked in witchcraft. <laughs> we, we do have some giveaways for it too, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, first of all, we have signed copies of them and they're beautiful books. And then um, we have the. There's like a sticker sheet that comes with mm-hmm. it, like for each season that has like a quote mm-hmm. on it. 
from the book. They're really pretty. Sweet. Sounds good. Okay. Business first. <laughs> Business first. And feelings and Whatever's technology. Going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, espionage, maybe? Okay. Ah, hello. This is my cousin, Aaron. This hello. is my cousin, Madison. Um, we are, I am here delivering my portion of this episode, Spread the Word, from beautiful Blaine, Washington. I'm going to tell you guys about The Maidens by Alex Michelides. So, Aaron very kindly gave a very good synopsis of. The Silent Patient. So I can say that solidly, The Maidens, if you read The Silent Patient, I think you will definitely like The Maidens. We open the book with Mariana leading a group therapy session in London. She ends up leaving London because her um, her niece, Zoe, um, her friend has gone missing and then later turns up dead. And it's very, and, and she's been stabbed 22 times. Thank you. Uh, so Mariana, um, she 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 feels very maternal towards Zoe because Zoe's parents died very young, and Zoe came to live with Mariana and her husband. Uh, so they basically raised Zoe. Mariana, so she's feeling very maternal and she wants to help with Zoe, but also, like maybe she can help figure out who killed this person, because then other women start turning up dead, and they also have been stabbed twenty two times, and also then they find like these these letters with the women yeah. and they all have references to Greek mythology. Mariana realizes what they are because she had like classics training and she starts, you know, she she's trying to figure out why somebody would leave those things. Um, and then you're also getting flashbacks to her relationship with her husband, which um, her husband, so her husband died 14 months prior to the start of the book. Um, they were on vacation in Greece. Mariana was devastated. But so it's like that's going back and forth, like going on throughout it. So she goes to Oxford to try and help solve the murder. She meets one of Zoe's um, professors, who Zoe has a, like seems scared of, um, and he's a classics professor, and he has these like these women, these stu- women students just trailing behind him, and they are you know having private tutoring with him and just fawning over him. And apparently they call themselves the Maidens. I don't like that. <laughs> you shouldn't like it. It's really weird. So I really can't say much more without giving the rest of the book away. I did not see the ending coming. I did not. It was a good it was a good switcheroo. But you think it's gonna go a whole bunch of different directions and not I didn't think it, it was gonna go where it went. There was there was a lot of there were a lot of really interesting Greek references throughout it. it yeah, it was it was a fun book to try and unpuzzle. I really, really liked it. Cheers! <laughs> Cheers! I don't know about you. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.